Hey everybody, welcome or welcome back as the case may be to the Avid Pro Video Webinar Series. Now last time out we talked about tips, tricks, and techniques that you can use to get the most out of the Media Composer timeline. Well today we've got an even bigger topic. We're going to talk about Media Composer and RED. Now considering the amount of questions we get about uh, the RED workflow and the immense popularity of the camera, it's high time we got down to doing this. Now before we do, I just want to talk about a couple of, uh, couple of things going on with this, with this stream that you're seeing. Uh, next to this video, of course, you see this chat window. And joining us today for this chat are a couple of experts from Media Composer, excuse me, from Avid about Media Composer, and that'd be Michael Phillips, as well as from Red, Ted Shilowitz. And during the presentation, if you have any questions about the things that I'm talking about or questions about Avid or Red in general, just post those to the chat window and, uh, and we'll answer them. Now this time we're doing something a little different with the chat in that it's gonna be a moderated chat. So when you post a comment or a question, it's not automatically gonna show up in the window. We're actually gonna select the ones that we wanna answer and those will be posted. But please don't let that stop you from, from making any comments or asking any questions. We're gonna look at all of them uh, at some point anyway. So that's how we're gonna run the chat window. Also, if you can't sit through the entire presentation and we expect this to run about 45 minutes to an hour, it will be available as a download later on just go to the Avid homepage and just do a search on Avid Pro Video Webinars and, and you'll find it no problem. Uh, also, if you, have, uh, if you have video streaming issues, we know that uh, you know, depending on how the internet's working in your part of the world, you might have some drop frames or some lag. Again, this will be available for download later on. You can check it out then. All right, let's get down to business. Uh, because the RED camera has so much flexibility and there's so many options when working with it, it leaves a lot of variables and a lot of questions to be answered in the workflow. Now we're not gonna be able to cover every possible permutation of a RED and Media Composer workflow. What we're gonna try and do is cover uh, the most straightforward ideas and the best practices that would apply to most workflows. And if we really had to boil everything down to just one decision or two concepts, it would be, should I use AMA to do my RED project or should I transcode the media up front, the RED files up front to native Avid MXF files? And as it is with most projects, it really comes down to a couple of issues storage capacity, and playback or transcode performance. So we're gonna start by taking a look at AMA. So as many of you know already, AMA stands for Avid Media Access, and it gives you direct and instantaneous access to non-native Avid Media, like uh, XDCAM or QuickTime, or, or in this case, RED. So what I'm gonna do is just link to my AMA volume, in this case, my RED Media, and that's on my desktop here under this folder. So you can see all the different, um, the RED magazine with all the clips, so I'm gonna choose that and say, okay. What that's gonna do is populate my bin with all these clips. And you can see that here they are, all online, all the media is there. Just double click and load it up into the source monitor. And hit play. So that's the beauty of AMA, is it's gonna let you access this material directly without any kind of transcoding. Now, one of the things people get stuck on all the time is playback performance. Now obviously, Working with AMA, the media is not native to Media Composer, so it's not going to perform as well as if you had actually captured the media. But there are things you can do to control uh, the playback performance. Now, when you're working with the RED camera, you can shoot a few different formats. Uh, right here, this graphic that I'm showing you details somebody shooting in a 4K, uh, shooting a 4K project in RED. So I have the full uh, 4096 by 2048 raster. Now the reason why you might choose to shoot 4K or 3K or 2K in red would come down to uh, depth of field issues or frame rate issues. Most people tend to shoot 4K because it allows them to extract two or anything smaller later on. If you start off shooting 2K, well that's, your sensor's always gonna be that big. You're never, never gonna be able to go back and extract more than that. Now you can with the color metadata, that's one of the really great things about the raw image file format that red has. So you can always go back and change your color metadata, but in this case, your resolution is your resolution. So when I select full as, or 4K as my resolution in red, what happens in Media Composer, since Media Composer sort of tops out at HD, it doesn't go higher than 1920 by 1080. Uh, if I had a 1920 by 1080 project, what it's gonna do is do a nearest fit. It's gonna point to the nearest resolution to 1920 by 1080. And in this case, it would be 2K, or half of the full, um, 4K resolution. And one of the things that we always prescribe to people when, when doing a RED project is to actually work in a 1080 project. Um, this is primarily due to the fact, okay, there's the nearest fit issue where, where um, it's the largest resolution we have, 1920 by 1080, but also that there are time code, um, you run into issues when doing lists or composition exports like AAF, 
when working in a 720 or SD project. Um, so we always prescribe people to work with 1080p, even if you're just gonna do ultimately a 720 out, you can always extract a 720 out of a 1080 project. But if you do, if you, as long as you're in 1080, you're not gonna have to worry about your frame rate and your time codes not matching and your list getting screwed up. Um, so that's one of the things we always tell people to do is, is do a 1080p project. So I've got my 1080p project. Here are my video settings that you would see in the Media Composer timeline. I'm just gonna go back to that really quick. So down here, these are the video settings. And it's gonna allow you to select best performance, draft quality, full quality, or if you had any kind of I.O. hardware hooked up, you would have the 10-bit option as well. Now I'm working in a software-only configuration uh, running on version 5.0.3 of Media Composer. So you're not gonna see that 10-bit there in this case. So going back to that graphic, if I had it set to 10-bit, if I had the video setting set to 10-bit, green, green, that is gonna give me a 2K premium extraction from the full 4K. So basically what I'm doing is I'm, I'm scaling down to 2K and then doing a little more scaling to the 1080 HD resolution. And it's at the premium setting, which is sort of an, uh, a red nomenclature for a little bit better smoothing of the image um, before the extraction actually happens. If I went to green, green without the 10-bit, that's gonna give me the same 2K uh, extraction, not quite as good uh, image quality, but a little bit better performance. And of course, as I, as I drop down in image quality, the performance is gonna get a little better. Green, yellow, that would give me a quarter res, so basically a 1K extraction from the full 4K and a little bit better performance and so on. So what if you actually did shoot a 2K um, to begin with? Well, then it would work like this. Obviously, the nearest fit from an HD would be right to the 2K, so you would get the full 2K extraction, again, just scale down slightly to HD. And you know, as you, as you can tell from the, the graphic here, when I go to green, green, it's gonna give me half, which is 1K. When I go to green, yellow, it's gonna give me a quarter, and so on, and then scale that accordingly to the, to the HD res. So this is how we sort of correlate you know, what your source is in, in red, whether it's 4K or 2K, to the image quality and the playback performance you're gonna get in Media Composer. Now these clips came in, as you can see here, as video only. There's no audio associated with them. Well, you'd see that if I switched over here. Okay, so they're video only, there's no audio. And what happens often uh, in productions like this is people do a double system record. They actually record, um, you know, the video went to the red camera and the audio went to a broadcast wave recorder. Now you can do a hybrid of that. A lot of people, what they'll do is they'll take the mix out of the broadcast wave recorder and pipe that to the red camera since it can actually record audio. So this gives you a nice mix or scratch track on the video side and your master broadcast wave files, you know, on hard disk or on data or, you know, whatever. Um, so what we've done is we've got the red files here in the system already and we've also got our broadcast wave files. So let me see if I can find these broadcast wave files. There they are. Now the great thing about Broadcast Wave is it retains a lot of really valuable metadata for use during post-production. You can see that uh, it tells me on track one I have my mix, on track two I have my boom mic, uh, on track three, let me zoom in a little more so you can see this even better. Track three is one character, track four is another character isolated. Um, and what's nice here is the sound mixer actually, or the sound recordist actually named the clips for me. So we actually have, you know, scene 30A, take two, there in the clip name, and that's gonna be pretty valuable to me. So what I wanna do is I'm going to um, copy those, or highlight that name column, and I'm gonna do an Apple D for duplicate. And what that's gonna ask me to do is say, okay, you wanna copy this information, what other column do you wanna post it into? And so I created a sort of a, a temp column um, called broadcast wave file name. And when I say okay to that, it's gonna populate um, that column with that same name. So you might be wondering, well, why would you bother to do that? You already have it in the name column. Well, it's gonna come in handy in this next step when we do uh, syncing of the clips. So what I need to do is auto-sync my video clips with these new audio files, or the, with the broadcast wave audio files. So I'm gonna go in here and sync sources. And I'm gonna bring my video files over into the broadcast wave folder. So now there are all my AMA clips, all my red clips, and my broadcast wave files. So I'm gonna select everything, and I'm gonna say auto sync. When I do that, it's gonna give me a few different options to work with.
First, it's, it's going to want to know how, I'm gonna, how am I going to sync these together. I'm going to use the film time code or the sound time code, which we don't have. Uh, if there's no time code at all, I could use in points or out points. It's just a manual process where I have to mark um, you know, the claps and then the WAV file with the actual sticks slapping together. In this case, we actually have time code jam synced to both the broadcast wave recorder and the red camera, so I'm going to select source time code. Now, I talked before about sometimes you do have audio on the video source, like maybe a scratch track. So let's say that they did record a mix track uh, on the video file. I could say keep that and give me just you know, whatever tracks I wanted. In this case, I just want track one. Well, they didn't, so I'm going to deselect that. Now, on the broadcast wave side, I can select which of the um, 1 to 16 tracks I want to keep. You saw in the metadata that the mixed track is on track one. So a mix down of the boom and these other two uh, mics is on this track. So I'm just going to keep track one. And I say OK. And that's going to give me a whole new group of subclips that have the video and the audio mixed. Problem is, the name got taken from the, um, from the video side. I lost that uh, clip information. So I'm going to go back to that. And I'm going to take this column here. Actually, what I'll do is make this a little cleaner. I'm going to take these subclips and move them into their own bin now. So these are my synced sources. And I'll move my AMA clips back to where they were. And I'm done with the broadcast wave files. I can close that. So now on my sync sources, I can take that broadcast wave file name, and just like I did before, do an Apple D for duplicate, and this time paste it into the name column. That's going to replace all those red source file names with the actual clip and take or uh, scene and take, which is much more valuable to me during post-production or during the editing process. So a really nice little trick there for accelerating the, uh, the organizational part of creative editorial.